As uh, we've already mentioned, we had a wonderful uh, <coughs> community Christmas meal uh, breakfast yesterday morning, and uh, part of our way of celebrating the Christmas season with some of the people in our community who are struggling and alone. <coughs> Um, as part of our celebration, we placed our church's nativity set on display at the back of Leonard Hall, and, and I was given the privilege of sharing a few thoughts about the, uh, the real meaning of the Christmas season. Uh, this was the first time I'd seen our, our Christmas uh, nativity set, and I suspect it will be making an appearance uh, here somewhere along the line. <laughs> but whenever I see a nativity set, it always gets me thinking about, you know, how are all the different characters that are in the nativity set feeling at the, the time of the nativity? Um, now, for some, it's hard to kind of figure that out. I mean, the cows and the goats and the doves, it's kind of hard to wonder what they're thinking about. But, but for the few, for the humans, it might be a, a little bit easier for us to, to uh, understand. Uh, and so today, I want us to to look at one of those human actors in this amazing drama of Christmas. Uh, the person that so often gets ignored, and that's Joseph. Joseph has been called the mystery man at the manger, and, and I, I think there is a lot of truth to that. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about Joseph, and, and in fact, even the Gospel writers didn't give us much about Joseph. He is so quiet and, and so in the background. And then he sort of disappears. In fact, he disappears in such a way that a lot of biblical scholars think that, that Joseph died while Jesus was still growing up. And that that's why you don't hear about him afterwards. But we do know a little bit about Joseph. And, and so while the little bit that we have is sometimes a bit of an impediment to understanding him, it's, it's not impossible for us to, to understand a little bit about who Joseph is. And, and I believe it's important because after all, this was the person that was selected to be the father of Jesus, to raise him, to nurture him, to, to be his male figure in his life. We don't know how important that is to have a male figure in our lives. And, and Joseph is a wonderful role model for that. And we're going to find out some of the reasons why. As I said, we don't know much about Joseph. This passage that we've read, as I've already said, is the primary place where we learn anything about Joseph. But if we look carefully and use our imagination, we see that the little we have paints an amazing picture of an incredible man of faith who provides us with a, a powerful example of faith and righteousness, mercy and love. So let's spend a little time this morning getting into the heart and mind of Joseph the Just as he adjusts to this reality that he has a part to play in the birth of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Now, the first thing that needs to be said is that the fact that Jesus is in our nativity scenes at all is a testament to his character. Think about what, Jesus, that what Joseph is going through at the beginning of the Christmas story, what we just read about. When we meet Joseph, we learn that he is engaged to be married to a young woman named Mary. And I have to have an imagination that, that what we, how we understand Joseph, how he feels about Mary because of the way he treats her later on is he's pretty happy about this engagement. Things look pretty good for Joseph. Now we must understand something about what engagement meant in those days and times because it mean, meant different things back then than it does to many of us here, especially in this country. We need to understand that to be engaged in those times that Joseph was living and in the place that he was living, to be engaged was almost like being married. It was a formal arrangement that was entered into in front of witnesses and it had the legal force of a contract or a force of a legal contract, I should say. So serious 
was this engagement that if the man died, the woman would be considered a widow. Or if the woman died, that the man would be called a widower. That's part of why when we read this passage, they say that Joseph is engaged to Mary, but then they also refer to him as her husband because of this different understanding of what was engaged, engagement was all about. In fact, if the engagement broke up before the marriage itself took place, it would be called a divorce. There were really only two primary differences between being engaged and being married in those times. And they, they were that in engagement, the man and the woman would not live together. And also, they would not engage in sexual intercourse until the actual marriage. Other than that, they really were connected to each other in a powerful way. And this understanding of engagement is what makes what happens in the Christmas story so difficult and challenging for Joseph. And how he responds gives us a view of his quiet strength of character and his noble heart and, and how he stood up and did the right thing in a very difficult situation. Because as the story progresses, things start to get, shall we say, complicated. You ever had your life get complicated? Well, then maybe you'll understand a little bit about what Joseph, if Joseph is going through. Somehow, in the, the delicate way that Matthew puts it, Mary was found to be with child. In other words, she found out that she was pregnant. And, and, and imagine then that first conversation when Mary came to tell Joseph that she was carrying a child. Whatever else they didn't know at that time, they definitely knew that it wasn't Joseph's child because they had been following the rules and had not slept together. We're not told how Mary broached the subject with Joseph, but if Mary used some of the words that we read in Matthew's Gospel, imagine how Joseph would have heard them. Imagine that Mary comes to Joseph and she says, Joseph, we, we need to talk. I have something to tell you. What is it, Mary? Well, it's pretty hard to talk about. Well, go ahead. I'm listening. Well, I find myself to be with child. You find yourself pregnant? Wait, you don't just find yourself pregnant. Who did this to you? Wait till I get my hands on that. Oh, no, no, Joseph, it's, it's, it's not like that. There is no one else. I would never do that to you. I'm still a virgin. <laughs> well, let me get this straight. You humiliate me and you shame me by sleeping with some other guy. You find yourself pregnant. And now you sit here and lie to me with a straight face and expect me to believe you? What kind of fool do you think I am? Now, none of this is in the Bible. But you know what I find when I read in the Gospels? Maybe you who have studied the Gospels understand. They, they kind of they collapse things, you know? They, they don't tell the whole story sometimes. They, they just tell what happens in the end. And, and we're left to imagine what happens in, in, from the beginning until that point. And, and I think that's the case here. I think that, that Joseph, when he first heard from Mary, and before the dream, he is one angry and, well, I won't use the language, but he is unhappy. I'll just say that. He's been humiliated. He's been shamed. And the woman that he loves has betrayed him somehow. And then she gives this crazy story. I can imagine that, that he went through all of those feelings. You know, when you first 
hear something or something happens to you that you're not expecting that you're unhappy about. You know, you might get a little bit angry and, and you might be a little bit upset and, and you need some time to adjust to that. And thank goodness some of us have learned not to immediately speak out of those at first feelings that we have. And that's what Joseph, we find, is able to do. He has all of these feelings, I'll bet. But somehow or another, he rises to the occasion. We're going to learn about how he does that. <coughs> Here's the interesting thing. Matthew, as I said, is compacting things a little bit. But before Joseph got to the place where uh, he finally did, he had to go through all of those different emotions. But, but he eventually got to the place where, even before he really has the dream that really seals the fact that that in fact this is a, a child from the Holy Spirit and that he hasn't been wronged. He works it through. Gets his emotions together. And he says, you know, I love Mary. She's a young girl. She made a mistake. And, and, and I think what I need to do is just Cut her a break. I mean, the relationship is over. But we're going to do it in such a way that her name doesn't get dragged through the mud. She doesn't have to go through any major public humiliation. See, he, loved, he still loves her. He still stands by her. It's an amazing thing. So the best way, he says, to make sure that Mary and her baby are okay, are okay. And this is what a man does, right? A real man makes sure that people are okay. He says before, so he, he figures the best way to make sure that uh, she, that Mary and her baby are okay is to, is to for him to swim simply and quietly end the engagement, divorce her with as little fanfare as possible, and clear the way for Mary to be spared. Not just the shame, but in fact the danger of her situation coming to light among the people of Nazareth. And of course, the plot thickens after that, but I, I want us for a moment to consider what an amazing and admirable thing in itself this decision on Joseph's part was. Because what happens with that decision is nothing less than the beginning of a new understanding of what it means to be righteous. You see, Matthew tells us that that, that Joseph is a righteous man, but, but what does he mean by that? Now here's how the law of Moses, which was the law that they were all under at this time, here's how the law of Moses would have defined a righteous response to this sort of situation. If we could just go to the next slide, if we could. Here's what it says in, in Deuteronomy. What, can, what you should do when this sort of thing happens. He said, it says, if there is a young woman, a virgin already engaged to be married, and of course that fits uh, Mary's situation, and a man meets her in the town and lies with her, you shall bring both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she did not cry for help in the town, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Now this response, according to scripture, would have been a righteous response, right? It's right there in the Bible. It would have been in accordance with the law of Moses. But, but Joseph was able to imagine a different, deeper, and better understanding of righteousness. Thank God we don't have those laws anymore. Amen? Amen. Some of us wouldn't be here. <laughs> Amen? I'm not going to lie. See, Joseph was able to see something that was a little closer to, to where Jesus would be heading, a, a little different and deeper and better understanding of righteousness. In a sense, we can see here in Joseph a little bit of what we will later see in Jesus, the capacity to see beyond the letter of the law to something deeper and purer and closer to the heart of God, something not motivated by getting away with what the law allows us to get away with, but by mercy 
and compassion and humility. Now remember, all of this is before Joseph is given the dream that if he can believe it, will clear up the mystery and restore the relationship between him and Mary. An angel comes to Joseph in a dream and, and tells him that Mary has been telling him the truth, that indeed there was no earthly father involved, and that he should not be afraid to take Mary for his wife and raise the child as if it was her his own. But here's what we need to remember. If Joseph didn't go down this different route to being righteous, Righteous. If Mary was dragged out to the edge of town and stoned to death, this dream would never have been dreamt. In fact, the death of Mary also would mean the death of the Christ child she is carrying. Yeah. But what a dream he has. A colleague imagines it this way. He says, here, whispered the angel, is the key that unlocks your dilemma. Believe Mary's unbelievable story. Marry her and become the father of God's child. He will need a father to be accepted by others as he grows to manhood. He will need not just any father, but a father like you, capable of nurturing him and giving him a name, Emmanuel, God with us. He will need a father like you to teach him to take risks like the one you are about to take, for he will be tempted not to take them. He will need a father like you to teach him to withstand the disapproval of others, as you will soon have to withstand it. He will need a father like you to teach him what to do in situations like this one, when all hope seems lost and only pain remains, to model how to believe the unbelievable good news and how to walk ahead in faith. Joseph, if you do not walk the hard road to Bethlehem, who will teach Jesus how to climb the cruel road to Calvary? And Joseph woke up to sleep and said, Not my will, but thine be done. Thank God for Joseph. Thank God for his wisdom and his compassion and his righteousness. It saved Jesus' life. And it gave Jesus the good start that he needed to go on to be the man that he becomes. He is the one who helps Jesus to grow in stature and in, in, in praise of all, the, of all the people. Along with Mary, of course. Now, Jesus isn't the only one who needs an example like Joseph. Can you imagine how much better the world would be if more men who found themselves in a situation like Joseph behaved like Joseph and stood up and did the right thing by their women and children? Parents, if you have boys, here's a great role model for them. Not only for you to be one, but point them to Joseph and say, this is what a man does. He stands up for what is right. He does the right thing. He stands by his woman and child. But to go a little further, it's not just men who need this. Mom. All of us do. We all struggle with tough situations and yearn for assurance from one who knows from experience that God's unbelievable good knows is true and that if we do stand up and do the right thing, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. If you want to be Jack Joseph, you want to be someone who stands for the right and the good no matter what. Trusting that dream that says it's going to be all right. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your husband. Don't be afraid to stand by your family. Don't be afraid to do the right thing, to tell the truth, and don't cheat anyone, and, and, and stand up and be a person who is righteous. If we prayerfully ponder the example of Joseph, this advent, surely God will work in us as God worked in him. 
This Advent, the fear of betrayal is met by the hope of the birth of an infant Savior. And I can't help but think of the wonderful words to that familiar carol, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by, yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. 